typically if kids pages are open to the public and or they have like this says up here about 600 plus friends that is a green light for child predators they're thinking okay this person probably accepts anybody as a friend so they'll let me in and a lot of these kids that have their Instagrams open to the public I could go on download a bunch of their pictures and open my own account in their in their name I could create a different name but I could pose as them and that is how those accounts for those child predators are getting created and these are typically the kids that they are targeting and one of the things I talked to them about today is just kind of putting the pieces together you know if they take a picture in a school shirt right they know the school that they go to or there was a kid today that had downers girl or something so I know what town you live in, I know what you look like, I could probably guess your age, I know if you're a boy or a girl, if I know your age in your town, I could probably find your school, right? In every picture, if you guys have heard of location services, every picture, there is embedded what's called metadata, and one of the things that that metadata gives is your latitude and longitude. So in one image, I could find you if I wanted to, and I probably know your name, because it's probably on your profile. Are. One of the best ways to find out the trending apps is going to your app store on whatever device you have, looking at the free apps, and looking at what's trending, like the top 10, top 20, and you'll see they pretty much stay normal, like stay regular for a while, and every so often a new one will sneak in there. The other thing that um, my counterpart and I do is Google Alerts. So if you have Gmail, Google Alerts, social networking, and Teams, and you get like, you know, around this time of year, trending apps for 2014. What were the best apps in 2013? Looking at the, the stocks, who's buying what, you know, because they're on top of what kids are using. Or asking the kids. If you have that open communication, it just takes one kid who's on their technology all the time to tell everybody else and they're all on it, right? And it's free. You don't necessarily know about it because you don't get charged. They do say that typically peers are the ones, if they have problems, whatever they're defining as problems, the peers are the ones they're going to go to. So if they are experiencing bullying, or they are experiencing any sort of social emotional challenges, typically they're going to their peers. So if you're maintaining that open line of communication and understanding that they're still learning, they're still developing, right? Their long-term thinking, critical thinking, isn't yet really developed until really they're an adult. So understanding that they are going to make mistakes, there are going to be challenges, and if you have the open line of communication, rather than you're grounded, no phone for a week, you know, end of story, and opening that communication with them, and still giving a consequence, definitely. But that they might start coming to you and, and recognizing that really you are the ones that can help them think critically and modeling those pro-social behaviors. And educating them is the most protection that you can give them.